Before we get started with the setup, I want to point out some assumptions that we are making. When we get to these areas in the setup, I won't be going into detail about these items. We are assuming that you have already purchased the ePayments Merchant Gateway module and have already gone through the process of getting that registered. You should have already established your PayLease account or accounts and have the Merchant or Gateway ID, the username, the password, and the bank account or payee ID for the account or accounts. You should already have the appropriate EFT transactions defined and created in Property Boss. If you are using the resident, prospect, or owner portals to accept payments, you should already have the web services turned on and are already familiar with processing web activity from those portals. Let's begin the setup by going to Setup Preferences near the bottom of the left menu. Then click on ePayments under the Enhanced Features section. The settings in the top portion will apply to all ePayment accounts and some additional settings may appear here in this area based on some selections we can make in the next steps. So I'm going to come back to these and explain them later. Let's skip down to this bottom section for ePayment accounts. By default, Property Boss names the first account as primary, but notice the fields next to it are blank because this account hasn't been set up yet. There is also a Rename Account button in the lower right to allow you to change the name of this account. The finger is currently pointing to this primary account, meaning it is currently being selected, so I will now click on Change Account. In this window, we see that we are setting up the primary account. The first option we have is to use the Payment Web Portal. Selecting this option will cause some additional settings to appear on the previous screen, as I mentioned before. I'm going to select this so I can show you these set settings later. If you are not using the portal for payment, you can skip this checkbox. And notice the reminder here that if we are using this option, that Web Services needs to be turned on. Here you have the option to set up this account to receive c credit cards or bank drafts or both. For this setup, I'm going to select Pay Lease for both. There are two setup buttons here, but since I have PayLease selected as the provider for both credit cards and bank drafts, clicking either button will open the same window. If I had selected a different provider for bank drafts, I would need to repeat these steps to set up each provider. In this window, you will need to use the configuration info that you received from PayLease when you established that account or accounts. If you need your data to be PCI compliant in order to meet the payment card industry data security standards, you can select this checkbox. This will mean that Property Boss will not store any credit card data. Instead, we would send that information to PayLease and Property Boss would only store the payer ID provided to us by PayLease. I'm going to skip this option to use test mode because that is really only used for troubleshooting issues with our support and it doesn't apply to our setup. If you need to view the actual values that you entered into any of these fields above, you can click on the View Values button. This will cause this pop-up to open asking you for a password. You would need to enter your user password for Property Boss. And then click on the field that you want to see the values for. This will cause the values to display for that field for that brief period of time. When you're done, click OK. The next thing we need to do is set up the draft types and fees. Here you need to select which draft types you will accept for this account. Since I selected to set this one up for both credit cards and bank drafts, 
I'm seeing the option for checking and savings along with the various credit cards. In addition to selecting the ones I want to accept, I need to indicate if there is any service fee for using these. You can enter a fixed dollar amount, such as $2 for MasterCard, or you can enter a percentage. You can also set the minimum or maximum, and when you are finished, click OK. Remember earlier, I selected to use the payment web portal. So now, when I click OK, you will see two additional options listed in the settings at the top here. If you need to set up additional e-payment accounts, you can click on the New Account button here at the bottom. This will give you a new window to name this additional account and the option to copy the settings from the existing account to save you some time. I'm just going to cancel this for now, but you should know that any additional accounts that you create will be listed here, and the settings listed here at the top will be applied to all of the accounts listed there at the bottom. So let's go through the settings at the top now. For the first two, I need to select the appropriate EFT transaction that was created for service fees to tenants and owners. Then I need to select the batch type for correcting decline transactions. If you have purchased the ePayments Bank Gateway option, there are some additional settings here related to sending payments to ten tenants and owners. I'm going to move down and select the appropriate EFT transaction that was created for tenant and owner payments. Okay, now that we have our ePayments account set up, we need to associate this account to our general ledger accounting files. First, I will click on OK. And then let's go into the general ledger in the left menu. Here you will see your list of accounting files. Select the appropriate file and click Edit Default Accounts. Here you just need to make sure the appropriate ePayment account is selected. Keep in mind that if you are using QuickBooks, this screen will look different, but you still need to be making sure that the correct ePayment account is associated. Okay, at this point we've finished the initial setup portion. The parts that we've just reviewed are typically things that you will not need to touch again. The next portion of this video is going to walk through the day-to-day -day actions that you would do regarding these e-payments. So let's imagine a scenario where a tenant comes into the office and wants to start using a credit card to make their monthly payments. The first thing I would do is pull up the lease by going to Units and Leases. Now that I have the lease open, click on the Tenants and Contacts tab. You will now see that there is a Setup EFT button beside each contact's name. Here I can manually enter the credit card information for the individual. The billing information is pre-populated with the contact's info, but you can change it if necessary. You can also select this checkbox to enter the information to schedule a recurring payment. Now I'm going to pause here for a moment and point out that if you are using the hosted version of Property Boss, you may come to this screen and already see this information populated. This means the individual used the portal to enter, enter their payment account information and set up the schedule to have their payment drafted. If you are not using the hosted version of Property Boss and the individual enters this inf information via the portal, it will not pre-populate here. It will show up in your web activity and will need to be processed first before it will show up here. We will look at the web activity a little bit later, 
but I did want to point out that you may see some data already populated in these fields if you are using the hosted version in conjunction with the resident portal. Once the information has been entered, click OK. Let's also imagine in this scenario that the tenant currently has an outstanding balance and we need to go ahead and manually add a payment transaction for him now. As you know, there are many different ways to enter a transaction, but since I'm here, I'm just going to click on the Register tab for this lease and then click on Enter New Transaction. I will select the EFT tenant payment transaction. And that will bring up the credit card information that I entered earlier. It should also be noted that this is the information that was entered for the contact on this lease and is populating as the default. However, if you have a one-off situation and they want to pay this using a different card, you could change it here and it would only apply to this one transaction. The next time you apply the EFT payment transaction for this tenant, the information that was entered as the default will display here again. I don't need to change anything, so I will just click OK. You will see a pop-up message telling you about the service fees for this transaction. You can click OK. Now notice here under the payment icons, there is a little message reminding you that this transaction has not been sent to PayLease yet. We can choose to send this one transaction now by clicking the Send Now button, or we can wait to send it with other transactions as a batch payment. I'm not going to send it now, so I can show you how this transaction will also show up in your auto post activity. Now this payment is displaying in the auto post activity in my Property Boss Today Navigator and it indicates that there is an EFT payment for PayLease that has not been sent. Before we send this though, I want to quickly show you how to set up a payment account information for one of your owners. You may need to set this up for situations where the owner needs to pay for maintenance work or other costs that are charged to the owner. So I'll start by going into that owner's notebook. In the Owner's Notebook, you enter this information by going to the Transactions tab and then click, clicking on the Set Up EFT button at the bottom. Once you click on this button, the steps are exactly the same for entering the information. I'm just going to cancel this because I want to get back to talking about the items waiting for us in the Auto Post activity. Let's start by reviewing the web activity. The first item we see is a recurring payment that has been submitted by Sharon Lane. If you are using the resident portal and are not using the hosted version, this is what you will see when someone has gone to the portal and entered their information to set up a recurring payment. The second item is a one-time payment that someone has submitted through the web portal and therefore it's in my queue. When you're ready to execute these, just click the execute button at the bottom. When the recurring payment is executed, the lease contact EFT information for Sharon Lane will be updated in Property Boss. When the web payment is executed, an EFT transaction is created with the payment information entered by the owner or tenant or prospect on the portal. Now let's review the EFT payments that need to be sent to PayLease. Here, clicking on the Execute button at the bottom will send the specified transactions to PayLease and you will receive a log report that will tell you which transactions were approved and if any were declined or had errors. 
Okay, that is the walkthrough of setting up Property Boss for Paylease and the basic transactions using Paylease. If you have any additional questions, please visit us at propertyboss.com support.